What's up YouTube and welcome back to Turf Therapy. It's finally the day we go back to the extension office to get our update from Joyce and hopefully we can catch some action over at the sod farm with Patrick. We're going to learn a little bit more about the extension office and the services they can provide to you and their background as well. Um, in the sod farm I'd like to explore their background and history as well and see what kind of things they do in preparation for winter since winter is upon us now. The temperature has dramatically changed so as I expected that's why I got a beanie on now because it's freaking cold but nevertheless it's not going to stop me because we're still going to get out there and get after it so I'm going to get right to that footage right after this <laughs> So guys, we're finally here. They do exist. Joyce is here along with Andy. We have a fellow uh, guest as well on the show. And we're just gonna jump straight into it, okay? So I'm gonna be over here in the corner because it's more so, you came here for this. This is what you asked for, so I'm bringing it to you today for you to see. All right, so we're gonna start off first with, what is you, you all's background, Joyce or Andy? What is your background? How'd you come about being here at the Extension Office? Tell them a little bit about yourself, your professions, what your studies are. Okay, we both have dirty hands, that's for sure, because we both are in the field of agriculture. Okay. So my job is the horticulturist on staff at the University of Maryland, and my experience is just a degree in horticulture, and I've worked in the horticulture field my whole life. Her whole life? Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. whole life I've been doing something. So I've been here 11 years. So I, I, I'd say that you, you're a big fan of uh, horticulture. Yes, I am. <laughs> I love working with youth and adults. Okay, yes. that's great. Youth and adults. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Andy, how about you? Oh, well, I've also been in the ag industry for the majority of my life, but I'm a little bit younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> Substantially younger. But uh, no, I, uh, so I'm the county agriculture agent here in Hartford County for University of Maryland Extension. So I work with the ag community directly, whereas Joyce works with more of the home horticulture community. Uh, my background is in plant and soil science. I went to University of Delaware, and then I have a master's degree in plant pathology. And I've been with Extension here for three and a half years. And then prior to that, I was at Delaware's Extension system for about a year and a half. Okay, cool, so cool. I've been in Extension for a while. I love, I love the work that Extension does. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So guys, I don't know if you heard that or not, but that kind of drilled in. So Andy, he works with agriculture. When I was talking about your local farmers about the extension offices, that's pretty much what you're referring to, right? You'll reach out to the local farmers and making sure they're getting the latest and greatest information, correct? Yeah, so the whole purpose of extension is to extend <laughs> university <laughs> research and knowledge to the community. So that's what our jobs are. And just in my case, I deal with with farmers, so the latest and greatest ideas, best management practices, research, um, education. We do classes and workshops and field walks and um, plenty of different publications and newsletters. Any way to get the information out to the community so that they can use it to better their better their lives in some way, make their operations more profitable, um, more sustainable. All that good stuff. Yep. And that's, benefit the environment. Yeah, that's great. And then Joyce is here for us common homeowner folks like us, uh, the, most of you that are watching this channel today. So that's great. And you kind of gave a great segue into the background of extension offices and their purposes. And I remember last time we were here, you told me it was Abraham Lincoln that actually established the initiative back in the day. He established the land grant university concept where okay. the land was set aside for the purpose of research to feed families in the United States of America. So that was his intention. Uh-huh. And then and, everything and then just birthed, birthed from there. From there. Yep. Extension wasn't formally established until 1914. However, prior to that, well, as Joyce was saying, back in Lincoln's tenure, if you will, um, land grant universities were doing extension type work, but the system wasn't formally established until 1914. Okay, so, okay, I got it now. So guys, you know, kind of misspoke last week, but you get the idea, right? His egg that was laid, was later birthed into what is exactly as we know it today, yeah. the extension program. Um, so what the people really came here for, they want to know. They want to know if I am right or if I am wrong. 
is is Rob from Turf Therapy, some crazy guy running around talking about this is Poet Trivial, this is Poet Annua. Uh, the, the, the viewers, they've already seen it. Andy, Joyce, what is your take on Poet Anya, Poet Trivialis? What do I have going on in my lung right now? And how do you feel about it? <laughs> well, my perspective as an ag agent, um, we deal with these guys in pastures sometimes. Okay. Um, they're an excellent forage. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's actually funny because before we came on camera, we were having a discussion. I said, Poet Trivialis, guys. I mean, it has a stoloniferous uh, characteristic, but uh, I mean, outside of it being screaming lime green and not blending with my turf as it stands now, it's not a bad plant at all. Um, it's just an undesirable weed for me. That, that That's pretty much what, what it is for me right now. So it's the character, rolling into the characteristics. When I was talking about the Poet Trivialis, uh, usually not outgrowing everything, like it's uh, the other, the Poet Trivi, the poet trivialis did i say that backwards the poet mm -hmm. annual not uh, not outgrowing everything like the poet trivialis and then the bunching formation that it usually has mm -hmm. in throwing those seed heads now trivialis is to my understanding will throw seed heads mm -hmm. but it has to get much taller right right it's a much yes. bigger plant much bigger plant i mean poet annual is a small plant as it is i mean that thing will seed It'll, if you cut it at two inches. Yeah, if you, it'll see it at an inch. Oh, well, that's, I didn't know that. <laughs> it'll see that an inch, guys. You can yeah. even see it right here. Look how short these seed stems, these flowering stems are. So yeah. there's your seeds, and that's not more than a couple inches tall. So right. That's why it becomes such a problem, is it flowers so short. Right. But rust off blue grass, the trivialis, it will flower, but it's a much bigger plant. I mean, it gets several feet before it flowers. Okay. All right, guys, and, and just to let you know, I'm considering taking some poet trivialis and some poet annua and replanting them sometime in the future and letting them go i just want to let them go and see what happens when you just leave nature alone and, and what we can get these plants to look like in their most mature state so stay tuned for that as well all right so, so like, uh, like you mentioned in a turf setting the reason they're undesirable is because they're the texture is different and the color is different right if they were deep green people would probably grow it as yeah a turf. yeah i know i would <laughs> and then i know like people like connor ward he'd probably be doing amazing things like that lawn rebel uh he would probably try to mow this at like a third of an inch or something crazy like that um i might have just given them idea to do a side <laughs> plot of poetry alice who knows he's Start out in utah a breeding program to get a different color Right, yeah, <laughs> we'll so adjust that cultivar. I just want to also say, you're calling this a weed. It does come in shade mixes. It, I mean, it can come in those mixes that you purchased. So it's not a full-fledged dead enemy unless you want a perfect lawn. Right, right. You, unless you're really bothered by this yellow, a little bit yellow color to it or the faster growing ability of this plant. Right. So in a, a hairy homeowner yeah. most often doesn't care. But he, these in this in, situation, he does. These are yeah. in most everyone's lawn. You it's got just em. that they're also mixed in with a bunch of other stuff, and it sort of almost blends in. Yeah. But when you have a lawn that's perfectly manicured, that's all deep, almost black blue, you know, Kentucky bluegrass, tall fescue, then these things really stick out. Yep. It's an eyesore, guys. And that kind of, yeah. what they're talking about is pretty much a, a little bit more in-depth composition. When I was saying sometimes it's naturally found in the ground already. Other times you can have it in your seed mix. And that's when we'll, we'll get a little bit more into that in another episode, but you gotta look at the back of the label. You gotta look at your noxious weeds. This is not a noxious weed. They actually gave me a little lesson on uh, what a noxious weed actually is by uh, actual federal and uh, light, uh, uh, literal terms. But then you'll have your other crop seed. And that's usually where this is gonna be found um, if it is caught in that mix. And that's when we're talking about going to big box stores and reading the back of that label. We will cover that in the future though. And was that correct? Okay, yeah. <laughs> right. I think sometimes it's in your shade mixes. It can yeah. be, oh, the dense shade, shade the dense shade mixes. Yes. Like your creeping fescues. Yes. And yes. yes, okay, yep. yeah, in that would make those. sense. Yep, and it's yep. super, and, and like, and, and I'm not having this issue all throughout my lawn, you guys see that. I'm having it in the most shaded portion of my lawn, in the back yard where it stays moist pretty much year round. If I get, if we have, if, if the rain is coming, it's wet. 
it just stays wet and it's wet all the time and there's nothing I can really do about it. And that's why I had nut sedge issues back there last year oh. and I'll probably have them again this year because oh. the nut sedge loves the wet. Hey, I think I just struck a chord oh. with Joyce. I, that's one of the most popular weed questions that I receive on lawns. Yeah, the nut sedge? Yeah, nut sedge. Right, so yeah. last time I came here, I don't know what my issue was, but Joyce recommended this book to me. If you are in the Northeast region, this is a very, very good book that just kind of open your eyes and uh, teach you some things on your own at your own pace. You can read it while you're at work. That's usually what I do when I'm on a break. Send it thus. Good book to pick up, guys. It's just a great tool to have in your arsenal when you're competing against uh, undesirable weeds that most homeowners would just look and turn the other way, but we're not most homeowners or home renters, are we? No, we're turf therapists. Okay, so. Moving forward, um, one thing that I thought was interesting, right, and how I actually started this was the, the difference of the ligules on the two. And to me, the ligules are completely different. And I think the poetrivialises are just way more pronounced, pointed, cheered with the translucent type look. Um, could we talk a little bit about that? Um, because that's what I thought was the smoking gun on identifying them, but the guys, I'm, I'm changing my position on that. I think it's more so the bunching pattern and the stoloniferous characteristics of the trivialis that's definitely going to give you your surefire identification. I know I started with the ligules, but I really just think the easiest way for you to identify this stuff is by this grows in bunches, this is stoloniferous. And I, and I have some footage that I'll show you later of how in my backyard is almost it almost looks like a mat that I can pull back like carpet. And you can look at the stolons just swarming all underneath there, but none of them are really going deep and down. And you know I water deep and infrequent, half an inch each time. So it's not like I'm pro pro uh, promoting a koi pond effect with my roots. It's just how this plant tends to spread and grow. You're right. The, the, the other big indicator to know this plant is it just makes these seed heads, the flower yeah. heads. Yeah. We call it an inflorescence, technically. Okay. But that's a big indicator because they do that pretty much most of the summer, don't they, Andy? They go to seed so fast. Right. Yeah, so the that, spring they're easy to the ID because they're always throwing those seed heads. Okay, so cool we got season. throwing the seed heads. We yeah. got bunching and stoloniferous for the... Uh, so you, this, both of these guys are also going to have boat-shaped tips on the end of their leaf blade because they're bluegrasses. Making them a family of the poa, right? Yep. Yep. So okay. Grouping. The other thing is with, especially with annual bluegrass, is the leaf blades, you'll see every once in a while, they'll get like this waviness to them, like okay. in the middle of the leaf blade. Oh, like right here? Yeah. Oh, good. That is there cool. Is. Yeah. I've Wrinkles. Never seen. They're like... Yep. Oh. Guys, I'm hoping I can pick this up. So um, that you'll find that on annual bluegrass a lot, uh, and some other. I'll get a better shot at home. I promise you. That is cool. I've never seen that. Before. I, ne I mean, I've seen it, but I've never paid any attention to and it. And that's a characteristic of the annual one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. There's some other grasses that'll do it. Orchard grass is one of them. That is cool. Yeah. Fun facts. See? Uh, yeah. It's worth the trip, guys. I'm telling yeah. you. Go to your local extension office. <laughs> Do it. Do it. All right. What else we got, Andy? What else we got? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to soak it all up as, mean, as much as we can. In comparison, I mean, the, the Trivialis has more of a shiny underneath blade you know it's blade leaf blade is a little bit more shiny looking waxy all waxy glossy compared to annual bluegrass yeah that's and true like if you go back and look at my videos guy the poa annual it has a dull look on the screen but this it's screen like you could see it clear as day if you roll back to any of my footage i throw a link up in the corner or something that you can that i'd show you a good shot of the differences but he's he's definitely right that's spot on and then the texture obviously i mean this is much finer blades than Stop that's true yeah. yeah yeah yep so so look for that boat tip look for the shiny light green colors yep and then the stolons underneath of the ground spreading a lot more than the poa annua right 
All and right, guys. What stands out in your lawn is the light green color. Too. The light green is like so they saw they saw the lawn guys. They watched like a little clip of a video. <laughs> they had to make sure that I wasn't a crazy guy because I <laughs> seem pretty weird, right? It's this guy <laughs> running around with a camera trying to talk to people about grass. That's not a common thing. All right. All right, guys. Like I told you, I was gonna get you a better shot of the footage when I came back home. Here we are, home right now. So, what I want you to zero in on, right? I'm gonna jump off screen real quick, but. Let's take a look at how this just pulls back. You see that? See how it's just pulling back? And then look at all the stolens. All of these stolens right here. Let's see if I can get in closer. Those are stolens, right? Those are all the root structures that's not going down into my soil, but they're still thriving as they lay. So that is what I mean by that stoleniferous uh, characteristic when it comes to the poet trivialis. Guys, we're here live at Aldino. Aldino. Yeah. Aldino, I've been saying Aldino, that was wrong. It's Aldino, I'm so sorry. Aldino side farm, live with Patrick, he does exist. I did not make him up, he is a real person. <laughs> so real quick, Patrick, what's your background? So um, my name is Patrick Barberi and I'm um, a third generation sod farmer. My grandfather started um, in the sod business in 1958 wow. um, and he grew everything that he could out of pasture grasses and using a lot of the old K31 <laughs> and uh, and whatever they could and, and he would go harvest pasture grasses after the cows moved out and then they would you know kind of go in and roll it and pick it up and it was super heavy and yeah. you know so those were the early days that I gladly was not a part of right those were Frankenstein loans that's right, right. that's right <laughs> um, my uncle Doug my uncle Toby my father Mike have all been in the sod business and uh, my dad Mike is still the owner and um, so my family uh, my understanding is that they purchased the uh, Aldino sod farm business from uh, from a different family, it, it, it was Dr. Bryant in 1974, okay. and so it's been my family's been known as Aldino Sod Farm since 1974, uh -huh. and Aldino is um, is termed from the area, uh, mainly named after the types of soils that are here, huh. and it's a blend of um, of sloppy uh, hydric and um, silt and loom type soils here that are kind of a unique blend that make albino oh. and um, as much as we are up on a hill the, the ground doesn't perk here okay so it does make a unique advantage for the area that in in summers of drought uh, the soil here maintains a lot more moisture than it would in some of the other uh, areas as you get closer to the bay that's super so, cool super fun fact kind of I had fun. had no idea <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Aldino has its own unique little yeah. composition. It's almost like uh, it, you you can only get champagne from Champagne France. Right, right, right. Right, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. That's great. And uh, Poet Annua, Poet yep. Trivialis, that's the main topic of this uh, series that I'm doing. Yes. Well, can you tell us what your experience is when it comes to the side or even maybe your own personal experience with Poet Annua and Poet Trivialis? Sure. Uh, we found that there are certain fields that it tends to uh, hang out in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and there are certain seasons that it just seems to kind of pop up and thrive in. Um, one of the things that we found with uh, Poa Trivialis is that it comes in a lot earlier uh, and grows faster in the fall or in the spring when it first comes out of dormancy sometimes. Right. And it all depends. It, you know, every year is a little bit different and, and I can't quite put my finger on how random it is. Right. Um, some seasons it comes in way early, some seasons it doesn't. Um, but uh, in the in the early spring, I think is the easiest to identify it. It's the it's the tallest. It's the like lime green in color, and it comes in pretty thick. Yep. And the only thing that um, that we've really been able to do is spray velocity, which is a product that um, that seemed to be pretty effective but it did take three applications and it was very expensive and now it's off the market yep no longer on the market i think matt martin made a video over the over there at uh what is it the grass factor the grass factor he did a run on velocity and he had the same experience as yeah. you did and now it's no longer on the market it was the only thing that was labeled to right really attack poet trivialis yeah. for some time and now you can't even get it anymore guys so that sucks, but you know, and this is not sponsored by Velocity, but you know, they, that's what it was. We want Velocity, give us Velocity back. No, yes. I'm um, <laughs> Velocity 2.0. <laughs> someone that we talked to said that there was a product in China that took care of Poa Trivialis. Of course, in, it's um, China. <laughs> in rice fields. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it didn't, 
uh, seemed to make sense to bring it to the states to get it through uh, the approval process. Okay, um, maybe they're rethinking that. I haven't seen anything on paper for that. It right. was something that I had an interesting conversation just like you and I are now. Yeah. Um, I've spoken with a lot of different representatives. I've spoken with people at the University of Maryland, uh, University of Michigan, and um, and one a smaller Ohio university that had some interesting articles on Poetrivialis and there's a couple of products that I'm interested in trying I have no experience with but one of them was uh, Exonerate I think it was 2SC yeah Matt Martin I think he ran Exonerator he okay. spoke about that as well and so that's um, something I'm really interested in trying uh, at a later time um, we've used uh, we also do to control a lot of different weeds especially the crabgrass you know mm -hmm. we're using the prodiamine of course and looking to do um, and then we also use the tenacity okay so we've had tenacity we've had some success with that in the past and you know one of the things that I discussed with my uh, sales reps is you know when you are continuing to use prodiamine and some of these pre-emergents you know it has to have some kind of an effect on it does on on the uh suppression yes but i think suppression is about as good as it gets right now yeah yeah um we um i'm trying to remember uh, we also used another product uh last year on a field that had quite a bit of um uh Poana and it had some poetry and it was um, exonerate, exonerate. Uh, but the only problem with exonerate that we saw was that it was very harsh on the bluegrass Think so it. It, it got really tender and didn't have a really good response on the roots okay so um, so we had some issues with that and it was an unirrigated and uh, unnetted field oh. so some of our grass products have a synthetic netting in it that we install and the grass grows through it right um, but I think and, I saw some of that coming in yes. at the side of the road. Yep. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's in in my opinion, we try to do as little as possible to make sure that we're doing, uh, I guess, the least amount of uh, impact on the environment. Of course, um, but Joyce would approve of that. I'm not I'm not <laughs> a big fan of of the netting, but um, you know, at, at times, uh, if you don't have the netting and you have a harsh summer like we just came off of. Uh, you know, you really wish you did. Anyway, um, how do you all prepare for the winter? What are some of the things that you do um, to just prep yourself to going into the winter to snow removal? Is there anything? I mean, um, really, without getting away the trade secrets. Of no, course. it's it's <laughs> mostly into um, you know putting the grass to bed. You know, mm -hmm. putting down your last bit of fertilizer before right. the winter time. Yeah. Sod farms are allowed a lot more. Uh, nitrogen than you are nitrogen and, and potash and, and a little bit of phosphorus more so than what's legally allowed in Maryland for, for the homeowners, homeowners. right uh, athletic fields get more they're right. kind of in between but the sod farms get the most right um, so we try to make sure that we put everything to bed we try to you know make sure everything's mowed at a certain level right. uh, before we put it down but then everything's really equipment related it's you know evaluating the whole fleet getting everything ready for winter put down uh, everything that has um, a radiator needs to be tested to make sure that it's it's ready for 20 some degrees like right <laughs> we're about to have 25 degrees tomorrow morning ridiculous and November right. early November All right um, the so, frost came two weeks early right yeah exactly yeah so, <laughs> right off a hot summer you know had a nice little window into fall and right then here we go straight into winter yeah um, so you know we get ready for that uh, we can't forget that you know for every time there's a early cold there's gonna be a late warm so yes. Uh, you know as we've always seen uh, you know unless there's a, a weather pattern that stays we're gonna have some warm days we're gonna have some busy sod days so yeah. um, just getting prepared for that um, you know getting all of our equipment and our parts ordered and getting ready for winter time um, we've been working on our snow fleet for about two weeks now we should be wrapping up on Monday or Tuesday getting that ready and wrapped um, up last year we had an early snow in November and we were the only ones uh, out of the people we knew that really were ready. That pretty much wraps it up today. Patrick does exist. Thank you for spending some time with us to uh, fill us in on your perspective from Assad Farm. Don't worry guys, we will be back here. More footage to come from the local Aldino, Aldino Sod Farm. Gosh, I gotta break that habit now because I've been saying it wrong for like three weeks or so probably longer than that. <laughs> but um, it's fine. Um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna be back here in the spring, show you some cool stuff. Uh, we were just discussing off camera some things that may come in the future, so stay tuned. So you gotta stay tuned to find out what it is. I'm not gonna give away the secrets now. Again, thank you, Patrick, yep. for checking in with us and sitting down with the weird guy coming around with bags of grass asking weird questions. Um, <laughs> check you guys later. We're gonna wrap this up right after this. What's up, YouTube? We're back at Turf Therapy headquarters. That's right. Um, so. What a day, right? That was fun. We met 
Andy. That was a surprise. Didn't even know Andy was gonna be there. I'm glad he was though. We met Joyce and you met Patrick, the people that you thought didn't exist. Now I'm joking. Um, so I just brought you back here because I wanted to recap. Like I said, I wanted to make this easier and I feel like I have. Let me know in the comments if I have, right? So we have Poet Trivialis and we have Poet Annual right here on the table. So um, I'm running two cameras right now, so excuse me. But like I said, guys, the Poet, the poet Trivialis, this being the Poet Trivialis, they already said, look at it. It just, it, I mean, look at it. It looks completely different. Um, it's screaming, and, and keep in mind is what type, what uh, time of the season it is right now, right? It's fall, so it's the fall time, and um, because it's fall, that, that is, this is why these uh, plants look the way they do. In the summer, uh, they would most likely be checked out, especially the Poet Ed. Um, that'd be gone. Um, poet Triv checked out on me this year as well. It just got so warm. So, bring this full circle. Poet Triv, uh, it is going to be Stoloniferous. You can see the stolons here, right? You can see, I can just spread them out. Um, and of course, I just showed you the carpet and what that looked like out there, how I could just pull it up, you know, almost peel it back, so to speak, like it was carpet. That's your Poet Trivialis. Also, the texture is a little different. It's a thicker plant, not as uh, skinny as this one. Um, really thinner blades we're working with over here. And then Andy, Andy gave us a really cool tip, right? He said, look at the blades, the thin blades, because every once in a while, these blades will have these wavy type things. And I promise you that I was gonna give you a clip of that. So, that's good stuff, people. I earned it, guys. This is a pretty cool feature, I think. Let's see if I can move it up, or maybe that will trick it to try to auto zoom in on what I want it to, which is this. Boom, there it is, guys. You see it? That's freaking cool, right? That little wavy texture. So that's what Andy was talking about. When Andy referred to that, uh, you know, it can have that little wavy characteristic to it. That's it, guys. That's that wavy characteristic. And we're talking about the difference between Poe Annua and Poe Trivialis, right? Also, let's not forget Poe Trivialis can throw seed heads. I mean, look at this. Like Joyce said, uh, it can throw seed heads when it's one inch tall. So that's a common thing that they do. And then Poe Trivialis grows in bunching formations or clumps, like a uh, clumping fescue, like that K31 Patrick had mentioned, you know, uh, that's a bunching fescue. Now that is an undesirable weed in our lawns today. And the thing about these grasses, keep in mind that they're so close in the family, on the family tree, that there's, there's no really good way to control Poet Trivialis. And the reason why there's no good way to con control Poet Trivialis is because it's in the bluegrass family. We haven't really figured out a way to only attack to develop a herbicide that is going to be a selective herbicide that is going to selectively uh, attack only Poet Trivialis. That herbicide is going to attack anything in that Poet family. That's pretty much where the science has us right now today when it comes to these turf grasses. Um, so with that, I'm gonna to have to use a non-selective herbicide when I uh, take this out in the spring. So guys, again, thanks coming. Thank you for coming back to Turf Therapy for this series, bringing this series to an end. Um, well, something happened, guys. I don't know what's going on with my GoPro, but I lost clips, right? I lost the ending clip of being at the uh, extension office. And it was really good because we discussed the winterizer, prepping for winter. Joyce gave us some tips with the winterizer. And Andy was complimenting me on my soil. He wanted to know what I was using. And I told him I was using that John Perry juice. You know what I mean? Taking care of that dirt and combined with uh, Matt Martin's beautiful chicken manure. And he said, my soil, he was like, your soil is rich. And that was one of the things he was saying to uh, keep this stuff out your lawn. He was actually going to say, it's in the dirt. That's the secret. The secret is in the dirt. He said, you get your dirt right, 
and you're naturally going to keep these things out of your lawn. And I believe that's true because I've seen people that's been on Green County further fertilizer products for an extensive amount of time now, and they have no weeds in their lawn. So it makes sense, which is why my approach next year is gonna be, I'm gonna to try to do more with less. Even though I'm not using less, I'm just being a lot more responsible and conservative when it comes to throwing down in, because I put way too much in down this year, guys. And we're gonna go over that when we go through my lawn journal, when we get a little colder and there's really nothing else to do and I'm prepping what that game plan is gonna be for in the spring. So that wraps this up. Thanks for coming back to Turf Therapy. My turf therapists out there, remember eat, mow, sleep, repeat. Don't cheat your lawn and your lawn won't cheat you. I'll see you next time for your weekly dose of therapy with Rob. See you next time. Thank you.